Hey everyone, Greg here. As you may know by now, I'm the co-founder and CEO of TripShock, an online reseller for water sports and tours. For the past 12 years, we've had the pleasure of working with hundreds of operators across the country, and we're looking to grow our community. It's free to sign up, and you only pay when we bring you confirmed bookings. We'll help you reach new customers, fill empty seats, and grow your business like so many have done with us over the years. Head over to partners.tripshock.com to learn more about our program, read testimonials, or speak directly with our supply team. As always, thank you for listening and enjoy the show. Guys, what is up? We are coming into episode 73 of the AWG podcast. Myself and my beautiful, handsome co-host, Greg Fisher, are joined by another beautiful, handsome man. He goes by a bunch of aliases. Chris Crawford, Chris Kane, Brian Crawford, Brian Crawfish. <laughs> I fucked this guy's name up, man. We had like a 30-minute conversation like the first time we ever talked. And the very next time I fucked his name up. Guys, the elusive founder found his business. <laughs> Brian Kane, tell us about yourselves. Tell us the name of your business. Tell us what it is you do, brother. Welcome to the show. Awesome, guys. Thanks for having me. Um, I am a fan of the show. So I was funny enough listening to uh, your the podcast from last week, uh, this morning at the gym. So um, yeah, I'm Brian Kane. Uh, I own Crawl New Orleans, Crawl Nashville, and I'm actually currently launching Crawl Tampa. So uh, New Orleans is home. Uh, that's the, the first uh, business that I, I opened in the tourism world. We've been operating about three and a half years. Thanks for having me. Awesome, dude. Awesome. So Brian, you're you're a big fan of marketing. Last uh, our last show, we had we had a sales we had a sales guy on, and in this show, we talk about a bunch of different things. But I I think like we go like marketing, and most recently for me, I've been sales is big like a big think kick I've been on for in a couple months. I'm sure it'll be something else, but. I mean, tell us a little bit about your history, man. How did your how did your company get started? What's its origins? How did you get such a wonderful fucking head of hair? So perfectly <laughs> sculpted. We need video, Greg. We need video because we need to see the handsomeness of this fucking guy's hair right now. <laughs> real, real talk. Um, it's it's actually pretty easy to be to, to be fair, Kevin. Um, so uh, my, my my business. Um, so I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, originally. Uh, I lived, I moved to Vegas in uh, the beginning of 2011 um, and i worked at, you know, like nightclubs and like day clubs and uh, there's a, a seasonality there. So at the end of, you know, high season, summer, essentially, I was looking for a side gig and started doing sales for a company called Las Vegas Club Crawl. And it was just a really small party tour. And uh, that company scaled to operate all over the world. And I was um, like a sales trainer and and lead for them in markets literally all over San Diego, Miami, London, England, Ibiza, Spain, Gold Coast, Australia. And so I always said that New Orleans and Nashville were the two markets that they should look into. Um, they didn't. So I left and moved here to start my own. It's literally um, how it all started. So through and through, I'm a sales guy, you know, I stopped people on the street, introduced the product and took their money in 11 minutes. So uh, that's how Crawl New Orleans started. Um, it, literally me, I had a sublease with an existing business here in the French Quarter. I made a little trade show booth that said, ask about the party. And I stood there and literally sold tickets and guided every single tour. So I was a one man operation uh, for the first uh, couple months. And now I have um, 10 people on the team. And I don't guide tours anymore. And we actually sell 95% of our tickets uh, online, like through, uh, you know, digital marketing and, um, you know, social media marketing, stuff like that. You know, it's amazing, Brian. Um, we've been selling um, tours in New Orleans for 10 years. And every now and then we'll sign up a new partner and they've been in business for years and they never sold online and they're making million plus a year. And I'm like, well, how are you doing it? And they're just literally selling on the street in the French Quarter, just selling tickets, like hustling. And I'm like, well, you know, you don't need an OTA or an online booking engine to be successful, really. Like the foundation is having, you know, good sales and having a, a good channel that that you can really uh, massage to do to do well. Now, obviously, like when we preach on this show to have multiple channels, and like you just said, ninety five percent of your business is online now. Um, but uh, it just amazes me when I talk to businesses and they tell me, like, yeah, we we did most of our business just from a kiosk or from us selling on the streets. And so, so if you're listening and thinking that 
you know, oh man, I, I don't have good SEO or man, I, I can't, I don't, I can't get good ranking on this OTA or whatever. Take it from the people in New Orleans that are selling on the street day in and day out, making a million dollars a year. Like you don't need to have all the best tech to be successful. Is that right, Brian? <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, uh, it's, it's interesting this market specifically for that, because you have, you literally have, you know, the best of both worlds. You have companies like myself who are, you know, really uh, leveraging people online. And then you have, you know, the, the information tour desk that, you know, they have six tour companies and a million brochures and they kind of look like they're a visitor center. And I mean, hundreds and hundreds of people a day walk in there and pick up the pamphlet. And just like you said, they're doing, you know, millions in revenue every, every day, just from foot traffic on the street. So I, uh, I completely agree. Yeah. There's, there's, there's room for, for, for both. And I will say with, with new Orleans though, that, that market is pretty um, saturated because the, the, uh, the barrier to entry is huge. The, the rents here are, are just astronomical on, um, in the French quarter. And so there's not really that many places that you can, um, that you can just move into and you really have to have the capital to really, to really back it up. Yeah. It's, it's increasingly getting more difficult over there, um, compared to the past. Um, but you know, I, I want to uh, break down. So you're saying 95% of your business is online. Uh, would you be able to share like, you know, um, a, breakdown of of that 95% like where are you seeing it in you know organic and just rough because I think that's interesting um, you know to hear that that it's so high up high up there Hey everyone, we're going to take a quick break to talk about our sponsor for the month, the Von Mac Agency. Von Mac is a full service digital marketing agency with a focus on tour and activity operators. They offer it all SEO, websites, pay per clicks, logos, content writing. If it's online marketing, they got you covered. As we mentioned before, it's uber important to hire an agency that understands our industry. And the Von Mac Agency knows water sports. Trust me. And they do all the shit that you don't want to do. They do all the shit that you're probably not very good at and they are look for listeners of the show america herself is giving a free consult all right if nothing else give her a shout give her a call take 30 minutes out of your day more importantly take 30 minutes out of her day so she can get you straight on your marketing needs that's right what do you have to lose head to vonmacagency.com and go to the contact us page to get started again vonmacagency.com and most importantly let them know you were sent by the AWG guys. All right, let's get back to the show. Right. So about se- just over 70% of our bookings come direct through the website. Um, my, our SEO is really good. I put a lot of time and energy into that when I first started the business, knowing that I wasn't going to be able to, you know, afford to have one of these shops. You know, you're, you're looking at six to $10,000 a month for a little, little space to have a, a tour desk, you know? So, um, you know, we rank really well yeah. for, you know, bar crawls, New Orleans, things to do in New Orleans, ghost tours, New Orleans. Um, and then also, uh, a lot of social media marketing. Um, I was lucky enough early on in the business. I had a consultation with, um, with Chris, uh, Torres from, uh, like the digital tourism show. And, um, he said, he told me some, some things about, you know, kind of creating a funnel without talking about the funnel. So, um, we run an ad that's a, uh, like things to do in new Orleans and anyone that clicks on it obviously then has interest in new Orleans. And then we retarget down based on which pages they landed on. So, you know, if you land on our food tour, then you're going to see a food tour ad, you know, further down. But the um, the top of funnel is literally just information. It's not selling anything. It's just saying, hey, here are things to do in New Orleans. And it just so happens that it's my business and my friends' businesses that are that are uh, in that in that blog post. So yeah, about seventy percent um, straight through the website, and then um, oh, cool. OTAs for the other roughly thirty. You know, TripAdvisor. We're on TripShock. We're on Airbnb experiences. Um, so I want to jump in real quick because I had a question earlier. My fucking mic took a shit again. Um, I got to I got to get a, I got to get a new cord. So I, I, first, I want to tr- go back to something you said. You're generating these sales on the street. 
what is the highest percentage commission, if you don't mind me asking, that you're paying from a street vendor? Um, if someone works directly for me, uh, 30%. Oh, I fucking knew it, dude. I, I think like these fucking motherfuckers, dude, I swear to God, like these street vendors got to fucking gather and they like have secret fucking meetings and they're like, hey, what can we fucking juice these guys for? It drives me crazy because in our industry, our margins are so fucking thin, dude. And and I, and it it's it's like a, a pedestal. I'm gonna get on and get a fucking. I, I'm gonna try and calm down. Well, I hear people paying twenty percent for rent, thirty percent commissions. Well, Insurance agents are called what twelve percent of revenue. Man, geez, I got so many of these fucking great business partners that are just fucking crushing my fucking margins, man. Like I, I feel like I'm in the wrong business sometimes. Like I should just sit back and fucking collect the check. And stop fucking actually putting a ton of effort and creativity. And fo- that's the negative side of Kevin. The positive side of Kevin is is going. Well, and this is why I've been focused on sales because, like you, in the when I was got started, I was like ninety five percent of all my money was coming through online portals. Like, man, we we're just crushing it. When I started really digging into our phone sales, Stephen Edwards brought it up to me, uh, oddly enough. He's like, what are you doing phone sales? And he's just like, I find it odd that you're doing so low in phone sales. So we started looking at our phone sales and going, shit, man, our phone sales do. They are pretty low. And then I started like digging into that. Because at the end of the day, I'm still spending for marketing. People are still calling. Why aren't those converting? I'm so focused on conversions online and optim- optimizing my online conversions. Here I've got this wonderful traffic source that's coming through that's not getting the same love that i'm sitting over here with every bright shiny tool just going like oh man yeah now now i can just no one will ever have to fucking answer the phone because i i personally was answering the phone and was taking up too much of my time so i'm like well well, shit i'm i'm not a 12 dollars an hour person anymore so do i have someone to answer my phones for 12 dollars an hour plus a commission plus a bonus so they can actually do pretty well if if they can close like me now we see our conversion costs going down. Mm-hmm. So our marketing costs are actually going down because the marketing dollars for the actual that are intertwined with our sales are going up because we're actually spending time with our phone people to make sure that those sales are 100% converting, that they're not just giving a script off of line or telling people to go book online, which is happening more and more and more. You just call and get, well, for us or service, just book online. And I understand that with these massive companies and these huge call centers, but for us, every single phone call that comes through for business to consumer that does not convert is a wasted ad spend. Absolutely. No more than your marketing. Yeah. So uh, you hit the nail right on the head there. So um, I think a lot of operators um, don't quite understand that, right? So the 30% commission that I pay to somebody uh, that works for me, that is an ad spend, right? So what is the, my cost of acquisition? for anyone, whether it came online, whether it came on the streets. Um, so for me, the reason why we do so much, uh, you know, online is I found that in this market, there's not as many people doing that right now. If I were to be in another city, I think that it would probably be significantly different because the street traffic, um, market here is really saturated, right? Right. Just on uh, Decatur street, you have, I want to say, six, six actual storefronts and then two like booths that are like, you know, a a tour desk stand that are in the middle of a parking lot that people walk up to. So that's eight on one road, right? So uh, for me, I would just thought, okay, I'm going to try to leverage these people online. And, you know, if more eyes are on the tour and our marketing, um, like photos and things like that are, are, pretty top notch because I put a lot of energy into making sure that they look so good. I'd rather spend the money and get my brand in front of their eyes that way than to try to spend on the rent on the employee on Decatur street or on Royal street. Yeah, Kevin, one thing I wanted to mention is that all commissions are not created equal. So, you know, I'm sure, you know, the 30% that Brian mentioned, you know, he's, you know, putting that into, uh, you know, his, he understands, you know, what that 30% is and, you know, he wouldn't be providing that if he couldn't still be profitable with it. Like, you know, 30% on a pontoon boat is ridiculous because you have insurance, you have fuel, you have, uh, um, you know, labor, but 30% on a 200 passenger 
you know, a tour boat might make sense because not everyone's going to be on that boat at 30% margin. Some might be at full price. Some might be at 10% discount. Some be at 30%. So, I mean, Brian may even go 50%. If you're, out of here, dude. I'll fucking come over there and, and punch you in the fucking face. <laughs> fuck that, man. 30%? 30, fuck that. I'm sorry. At the end of the day, 50%? Oh my God, this fucking market. At the end of the day, here's what I want to know. I want to fucking, I'll pay you 20%, Craig. I'll pay you 30%. I would sell my children before I paid you 50%. <laughs> look, at the end of the day, I want to know, how can I have gotten, it, look, if because the devil's in these fucking decimals, man. And this is what guys better fucking understand. That yes, 20, 30%, you got a boat going out. You want to pay 30%? Yes, I agree. If that's the case, if I got three boats sitting there, I said it last night. I said it to my partner last night. If I got three boats fucking sitting there, I'll pay fucking 50%. I literally just said that. So I agree. But the war and the constant battle in that is to reach them first. I know you're not always going to be able to, but you've got, you've got to be figuring out how you can reach them first. So that could have happened on a phone call. All right. They didn't get closed by you, but then they went in line on book and booked on TripShock or TripAdvisor or fucking God forbid a fucking scumbag street vendor. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm sorry, man, but I've dealt with these guys before in Key West and I just, they're the fucking absolute worst. They lie to fucking people that do anything like, you know, got an Oxycontin problem and they fucking, and they're alcoholic and they need to get whatever they need. I do whatever you say, man. Just like, I need to get this $7, you know, fucking give me my 30%. But it's like, it's like, get in the fucking weeds and like close the fucking sale, increase your fucking marketing, figure out different avenues, get creative, get work fucking harder because at 30, 40, 50%, I want to know why you got those fucking three boats, why you got those three seats on the 200 cruise ship, why you got those guys on fucking Brian's tour. And I fucking did it because it damn sure cost you less than whatever you're charging me because if there was no fucking margin, it, you wouldn't be in business, motherfucker. <laughs> what? So, you know what? You, Woo! <laughs> I like what you said there about, <laughs> about the, uh, the street vendor situation is you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, people lie, you know, and they embellish certain things that the tour may or may not do. And then I think uh, guests have uh, a, um, a perception of what they're going to receive based on what that person told them. And sometimes it's not completely true, right? And they're led to believe something that, that's not it. And then it comes back on the operator as, as well on, okay, they were pro promised this dream and it wasn't. And then you get the negative review that then messes up all of the online sales then after because you have this bad review on the on the top. So um, I, I know exactly what you mean with the Key West thing. I, I've been to Key West a number of times and it's the same thing on Las Vegas Boulevard. You know, it's everyone's just trying to get that next person, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I just, I want to reiterate here, like at the end of the day, dude, resellers and OTAs and salespeople, they deserve every last bit of commission. And, and, and no matter what, dude, you, you're not going to win every last bit of fucking traffic. You, you're just, you're not, you're not going to close every fucking, every, like somebody calls back and they talk to somebody over at trip shock versus ours. They might've provided like OTA, TAs, resellers, everyone that's getting their 20 and 30% commission, Absolutely worth it. And if I got three boats there and somebody goes, Hey man, I got a boat for you. I can only give you 150 bucks. But, but as an owner, like if you're not, if you're not sweating some of these things, if you're not like constantly watching your margins, because I'm notorious on some things about watching my margin and some things I'm not, I'm still learning. You know, every day I'm still learning it. We could be pissing money away on a bad employee. Well, like you said before, Greg, like well, the, the CFO says to the CEO in, the, in that meme, you know, like, what if we don't invest the money in the employee? And it's like, yeah, what if you don't invest the money in that person? If you're if you're scrimping, if you're going like, well, I'm not paying 20, 30 percent. I'm not going to give that person a 10 or 20 percent raise because I could get, you know, whatever for ten dollars. It's like, well, that person might be a hundred thousand dollar asset. You don't know. And additionally, that customer that comes at 20, 30%, they will lessen your acquisition cost by becoming your customer if you do the right thing. So you can pay to acquire them one time and then their CLV, their lifetime value could be worth much, much more than that. And then that 20% over the course of the years is something like 5% to acquire that customer. So it's worth it. And, 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 and I don't mean to 
like bang down these 20, 30, 40, 50, you know, whatever these people are charging OTAs and resellers, because sometimes it could be costing them 19% to acquire that customer. And they own, and they, and, and it, their, their CLV could be completely lower. You have no idea what's happening in the business, why they're charging what they're charging. So I don't mean to, sh- to, to go after that so hard, the commission thing, but at the same point in time, it's like sometimes it becomes so much and you're just like, man, I, I'm like out operating at like 20% margins because I paid Google, because I paid OTA, because I'm investing people's infrastructure. But as Simon Sinek said, right, leaders eat last anyway. So to play devil's advocate back and forth, sometimes you just you have to do it. And it works out if you're if well, you're wouldn't, you, wouldn't you build it into your cost? Like, I mean, Brian's paying 30%. I mean, Brian, is that something you do? Like with these yeah, commissions, it's, it's built in, into the cost. Um, but also, you know, what, what Kevin said, you know, I get someone on one tour, it might've cost me 30%, right. For, for that person on that tour, but then I'm remarketing to them on, you know, email text channels that I then might increase their, you know, average order value. So they didn't just purchase one tour. Maybe I got them on a two or three tour package. So then it's not actually 30% because if I get them on two tours that are $60 each, right. But I only paid 30% on the first 60, right. Then that commission, um, you know, goes down over, you know, over time with that person or that group. So, um, and that's a, that's a big thing in this industry as well, right? Like everyone, you know, the, the big giants, the, uh, the Viators, everyone you know, wants to say they hate, um, you know, there's way to, ways to then own that customer, you know? So if Greg, if you book my tour on uh, one of my tours on uh, Viator, I'm going to get you to sign a waiver and then I'm going to pull all that information and then I'm going to remarket to you on my email and my text channels because I now have all of your information from them essentially so something you've you've done brian i think which is 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 awesome and i think everybody needs to do it out there is is you are decommoditizing your brand and this is what everybody needs to realize you need to realize that if you decommoditize your brand right you take it from you know a walking tour and to the crawl tour or justin does takes a kayak tour and turns into a get up and go kayak tour now you're decommoditizing and you're creating an experiential transaction that you can ask more for so there has got to be dynamic pricing strategies in everything that you do because as greg says yes you built you build that into your price but you have to keep in mind that that price has got to be fluid it can't be 1999 for the rest of your existence because inflation because gas prices, because of labor costs, because of supply and demand shortages. I think what the pandemic really did was highlight how fluid we have to be moving forward in all of our businesses, especially being brick and mortar. That there's some things that we right. can't get away from that are going to be just, we're, we're not, we don't live online. We do still work person to person very much so, but we have to still be able to pull from what's happening online and what's happening in the real world. And that means staying nimble. And I think Brian's doing a fantastic job of doing both those things, remaining nimble. I mean, obviously you're like marketing super on point, your branding super on point. Um, So what's in the future for you, bro? Like, I mean, how are you going to take over the world, man? Let's hear this plan. (laughs) Um, So, well, thank you first. Um, So Nashville is next. I was launching uh, Crawl Nashville as the pandemic happened. And uh, luckily enough, actually, I was there uh, a week before, you know, we all kind of went into to lockdown and uh, my now ex and I at the time disagreed on which building we should move into. And if we would have agreed, it would have cost me, you know, 20 some thousand dollars because we would have signed a lease. Um, so so we uh, we didn't. And I just put that on uh, on hold through this whole, uh, you know, kind of pandemic to see are they opening? Are they not opening? It was really kind of weird there. So now um, it's it's up and ready to go. So I actually, um, I'm flying there tomorrow and um, we're going to get, uh, you know, everything up and, and ready to launch. And we're looking for a, a May 1st or first week of May uh, will be the first, uh, the first tour there. So that's, that's awesome, next man. on the list. Yeah. So man, busy 2022 for sure. Oh, that's fantastic, man. And And how long have you been in business again? 
three and a half years. Three and a half years, man. That's awesome. So now you guys will have a second, a new location in Nashville, and you have three locate, and you have, I'm sorry, four separate tours that you're running in New Orleans. New Orleans. So, so New Orleans, we do. Um, it's like five ish, six. Um, so we have our like VIP bar and club crawl, which is what we're most well known for. Uh, we have a haunted tour. We have a food tour. We have um, photo walk. New Orleans is our Instagram photo walk. Uh, and then we also have, uh, it's called the Sunday Fun Day Party Crawl. And it's essentially just a daytime, uh, like, bar crawl that does, like, courtyards and balconies and stuff like that. So it, it's, it's, it's weird for me because, like, typically, like, so when people, like, in the beginning of the show, people come on and, like, they, they pitch their fucking thing. And me and Greg would both fall asleep and they continue to talk. And then we come to him and be like, yeah, you have a dolphin tour. That's great, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, but this is just uh, – Oddly enough, like I find this the whole the tour market like interesting because I mean I I do a lot of walking myself just to like walk and think, but to walk and have someone like point shit out, it's like not something I would I guess working in water sports for so long, like I would see these trolley tours in Key West and I would just like see all these old people on it. I'd just be like, What the fuck are those people doing, man? It seems like so incredibly boring to me. And now I'm like forty three and I'm getting old and gray my beer, I'm like, gee whiz, man, uh a trolley tour sounds pretty good, man. <laughs> I can maybe take a little stress <laughs> off the old knees. And uh, like, I'm not so interested in the walking tour. It's funny. The older I get, the more I want to go on these tours. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I want to start my own. I'm interested. I want to do like a walking tour of fucking desk. I'm not, I'll like roll in like wheels, man. My joints, I'm getting like really, man, I'm really feeling old. But yeah, I'm like, they do, they seem like so much fun. I'm like, I know that shit's not haunted. Like, we both know that that's not haunted. But I mean, I'm interested in you going like, ooh, and maybe giving me like 10 glasses of wine, you know? Like. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, I, I was never uh, a guy to go on a tour. You know, and I've traveled all over the world and I used to see people on tours like, why would you ever do that? And now yeah. owning a tour company, I find myself wanting to go on to go on more tours as I get older. Yeah, it's funny, like with the with the what is it? The accelerate the ex, not or the Google things to do whatever they back in bed with the fucking OTAs again. And because I was in Charlotte. And I was like, I like didn't barely plan anything. I used to plan all my trips. And now I'm just like, I oh, will just go and figure something out when we get there. I'm like, you know, so of course I'm like things to do in Charlotte, you know, and then boom, across the top of the page is this like really slick looking, like OTA owned all the tours and shit. And then my poor kids and wife, I like fucking get on the phone. I'm like, ah, I wasn't paying attention at arrival to anything other than my own big fat mouth. What is this going on with this thing? Like they talked about it for three straight days at arrival. I'm like, oh, that's why I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't want to talk about OTAs or fucking any of that bullshit anymore. So I'm just like, wow, this is really cool. And and Google and the, and that that whole like. You know, it's like, oh, how can we get on this? Oh, you can sign up with the OTAs and pay them more commissions and get better placement. And it's just like, son of a bitch, dude. But then it just, I don't know about you, Brian, but it reinvigorates me. It, it makes me want to get like, it, get back in the mud. When I see that shit and when I see the, the whole pay to play model and they're just taking over, it makes me want to dogfight. I feel like I'm pushed into a corner. I'm like, how can I get creative? How can I acquire those customers? You know, nothing against Google, nothing against OTAs. As I said at Arrival, these are tools. What other tools do, do I have in my arsenal? Does Brian have in his arsenal, which it sounds like, I'm like, you got them all, man. You guys are remarketing all your shit. You're really, you're doing it on every level, which is awesome. But I mean, it just, I don't know about you guys, but when I see the big OTAs in Google, like getting in bed together and creating the content and throwing it at the top of the page there, I just, man, I want to start like going door to door or some shit, man. I'm taking over yeah. and start knocking on people's doors. You guys want a jet ski? Come on, man. It'd be great. Door to door sales. Let's go. Um, so, uh, no, I, 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 I agree, but I'm going to give everyone a little cheat code. Okay. So I started playing with this at the end of the, of, uh, 2021 and it's absolutely just crushing it right now. So I was asked to be part of the, um, um, via tour, um, is it, I think it's called accelerate or, yeah. you know, where you can like up your commission. So I took, uh, my, my one, my most popular tour and the one that just has the best margin and I upped it. Right. So it's really kind of going, you know, through the roof. Okay. Yeah, we did the same thing. But the, and that's the only tour that I'm doing that for. So it's giving, you know, the brand more visibility, but that tour specifically, then 
they're signing the waiver. So, and I, I use peak, um, you know, a, any one of the platforms that has a, some sort of waiver and, and linking to, um, to Zapier, you can do this with. So anytime someone signs a waiver, I get their name, their email address, and their phone number. Then I'm linking it into my active campaign. So they're going to get an email blast about our other tours with a very modest discount for adding on. Additionally, I'm working with tour op. Uh, it's a text SMS, um, service again, completely automated and it knows what tour they booked and then they're getting remarketed for any one of the other tours. So it's really crushing it. Like our, what, what's that uh, called? Tour, what's that called? Tour op? Tour, tour op. Yeah. Um, T O U R O P P O P T like opt in. No, no, no. O P P O P P. Oh, that sounds like, Hey, remember that song? Down with OPP. Yeah, you know me. Yeah, you remember that shit. Well, hey, man, Brian, look, we're, uh, dude, we're, I appreciate you so much for coming on the show, man. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was great um, catching back up with you again, and, and thank you for carving out some time to come out here and, and talk with us. We are hitting it on 30 minutes, so um, how can people reach you, brother? Um, so my email address, Brian, B-R-I-A-N, at crawlneworleans.com. Um, our website, crawlneworleans.com, crawltampa.com, crawlnashville.com. Um, yeah, that's how you find me. Awesome, man. Well, hey, uh, make sure um, if you're listening, check out our Facebook group, uh, Water Sport uh, Tour Professionals, or I think, Kevin, you recently changed it, Water Sport Tour Don't do it. Activity. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> it's, activity, activity is spelled incorrectly. You'll know it that way. Uh, yeah, and, and we can't on, change yeah. it for 28 days. So, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. Real marketing on- master right here, dude. I'm branding activities, dude. I'm, re- I'm changing the scope of that. I'm a fucking moron. Activity. <laughs> um, uh, we have... <laughs> Um, and then po- make sure to follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, leave us a review, uh, good or bad ones. We don't care. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening. And as always, keep it awkward. <laughs>